Hello and welcome to Partners in Public Safety. This is a program where we explore the fire department, the police department, and our Office of Emergency Management. We get to meet the men and women who staff our public safety team here in the city of Wilmington. But you know, this uh, program carries also a very important message. Uh, as the title would suggest, Partners in Public Safety, it is up to us, all of us as citizens, to help the men and women of the police department, fire department, and emergency management office to do their jobs more effectively. And you, you might say, well, how? Well, we can learn how to keep our community safer in terms of police presence. Uh, we can learn how to keep our families safer in terms of preventing fires so firefighters don't have to be called out. And then what do we do when we have emergency or man-made disasters? Well, that's where we look to our Office of Emergency Management. So that's what Partners in Public Safety is all about. And our first guest today is Inspector Beverly Wilcher uh, from the Wilmington Fire Department and from the Fire Marshal's <coughs> Office. Yes, good morning. Thank you for having me. Jim. It's good uh, for you to be here with us. And you know, uh, I, I have to say this at the top. I've known uh, uh, Inspector uh, Wilcher for a number of years. And uh, you are a, you're a true professional, but you're a very nice person too. Oh, and, thank uh, you, John. And I know people know that on the in the fire within the fire department, and the people you meet out in the community know that also. So it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, John. Uh, tell us a little bit about the fire marshal's <coughs> office. What are the functions of the fire marshal's office? Well, where there are several functions. Um, where are uh, the prevention division of the Wilmington Fire Department and our function as it says prevention that's basically my function and the other inspectors that go out in the community we it is our attempt to prevent overcrowded schools, overcrowded uh, buildings. That's why uh, we do occupant load. Okay, we see the signs. Mm -hmm. We see the occupancy signs. Mm -hmm. It says mm -hmm. only so many people allowed yes. in here. Yes. All right, so that's to make sure that in the event of any kind of an emergency that the exits that are in those facilities, that people can use those exits and get out if they need to. Well, uh, John, yes. Uh, not not just in case of an emergency. If there's an occupant load on a building that is, let's say, 35, mm -hmm. and a person or the company wants to put uh, 40 people mm -hmm. in, in there, then uh, we, we deem that that building is not large enough to accommodate gotcha. that many and people. And that's based on the space, obviously, that's, of the building. That is right. based on the square footage, and if there's any equipment inside mm -hmm. the the space, whether it be desks mm -hmm. or tables or or so. This is also things that come out of the fire marshal's office. We work very closely with the Office of License and Inspection, and when we're calculating occupant load because that's vital yeah that's that's vital yeah. and then we have our uh, in inspectors that go out and they um, are after a fire and they go through and they can determine how the fire was started and and all of that is very interesting well I'm sure it is and uh, and yet that's when we hear after the fact mm -hmm. uh, that uh, a fire was started because of accidental if it was smoking materials or candles candles or um, and then again you get into the whole issue of fire start because of mm -hmm. bad electrical mm -hmm. wiring mm -hmm. um, and then the the worst case scenario is when we have an arson yes uh, fire. Or, and let's not forget our our babies who uh, are just curious they find mommy or daddy's lighter mm -hmm. laying around mm -hmm. or the clicker you know and they've seen mommy and daddy use it and they're fascinated and they use it themselves yeah. and before you know it yeah well we have a house fire we have a house fire and uh, and you know one of the things we wanted to concentrate on today is our fire uh, fighting units uh, throughout the city of Wilmington are very well trained mm -hmm. um, we have great equipment mm -hmm. uh, and we have uh, good men and women as I say mm -hmm. in the fire department but the whole uh, point here is not to have to call them out on a fire if at all possible um, let me turn just for a moment. Uh, I'm going to uh, jump ahead for a moment okay. to the uh, the fire prevention part, okay. which is what you're known for. I know you're known throughout the city of Wilmington. 
there are probably young people watching this show today who remember seeing Beverly uh, come into their school, talk to them, right. and tell us a little bit about what you do on the whole fire prevention side. And then once we get to that, okay. we'll go back and talk about uh, a great program here in the city of Wilmington, which is the smoke and carbon monoxide alarm program that we have. But first, okay. start. Uh, let's start with the prevention program. And I, I know you enjoy this. I <laughs> <laughs> can you tell? I know you do. <laughs> uh, well, I I am a constant presence throughout our community because um, fire prevention, I, I believe, is not just uh, five days a week uh, from 7.30 to 5.30. Uh, fire prevention is 24-7. And that being said, then I need to be wherever I could um, reach the largest amount of an audience at that particular time. So whether it is a civic association meeting or I go to the schools and there's an assembly or where um, church gatherings or wherever there is an audience that I could get the get the message out for fire prevention. Prevention, prevention, prevention. Okay. And I know that you know that you probably uh, because people are listening. Okay. And, and again we're all partners in this thing but you've saved a lot of lives, I'm sure, over the years because people are listening to what you say. Mm -hmm. Now, in our homes, we can take steps. Let's turn to the um, okay. smoke and carbon monoxide uh, alarm program. Okay. We can take steps to protect ourselves. Yes. Tell us about what the fire department has available to us All right. by picking up the phone and asking. All right. Um, well, you can always pick up the phone and my direct line that you can reach me directly mm -hmm. is uh, 302. 576-3129. And, but if you need a smoke alarm, we have a smoke alarm hotline that you call that number and that telephone number is 302-571-4361. Okay. And it's a recording and it's going to ask you to leave your name, your phone number, and your address. Uh, now I, you'll get back to these folks and actually do you actually go out to the homes and 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 help them hook up the smoke and carbon monoxide well, detectors well what happens john is um after i get the information from the smoke detector hotline mm -hmm. um and I initially make contact. Mm -hmm. I, I want to know if it's a senior or if it's an apartment building be, because there's a qualifications, you know, that you have to qualify. You have to be eligible. You have to be eligible. Okay. And to be eligible, you have to own your own property. We don't provide them for um, rental properties because if you rent a house or an apartment here mm -hmm. in the city of Wilmington, then you are obligated to provide smoke detectors oh, and or carbon monoxide as the property detectors owner, as, the as landlord. the property owner. Okay. Now, you may instruct the, the tenant to maintain them. Right. But that's between you, you. and the team. Right. But you have to provide them. Okay. City now, code. We've run out of time already. Okay. Uh, you're you're going to have plenty of time to come back and visit with us I'm uh, looking on, forward on future to programs. I know uh, one quick thing is um, on some of the new smoke detectors, yes. the new batteries are 10 year batteries, which are tremendous. Yes. But a, a word of caution for those watching the program. If you don't have one of what they're called lithium batteries, yes. if you don't have one of those, you still have to check and make sure you're changing the batteries in your smoke detectors in your home. Uh, yes. the, 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 the new uh, units will uh, uh, sort of ne negate the need, but please always check your battery and make sure that those smoke detectors are working. Yes. Inspector Beverly Wilcher, thank you so much for joining us thank on you Partners for having in me, Public John. Safety. We appreciate it, and we'll see you real soon, okay? All right. Thank All righty, and our program will continue in just a moment.
at goodgoes.org. Did you know that getting up and getting active for just 60 minutes a day is all it takes to help you get stronger, look better, and feel great? Or that fresh fruits and veggies aren't just healthier and crunchier, they can taste better too? Eating better and getting more active is easier than you think. Yeah! Keep watching for some fun and easy ways to discover the magic of healthy living in your life. America, let's get healthy together! <laughs> We welcome you back to Partners in Public Safety, and in this segment of the program, and by the way, this program is coming to you from our Emergency Operations Center, which is on South Heald Street in the Southbridge section of the city of Wilmington. In this segment, I ask uh, you a question as you're watching this program. Do you know what to do if there were an explosion or a hurricane or other natural or man-made disasters that occur in the city of Wilmington? Would you would you know what to do? Would you know how to protect your family? Well, many of us here in the city of Wilmington turn to George Giles, who is with us now as our emergency management director. And George, you have the responsibility of putting together a plan that deals with either evacuations, if necessary, or what, are, what is called sheltering in place. In other words, what do we do when something happens? Let's begin first with evacuation. How do we know when to evacuate? I know you're going to tell us but how do you make that determination? Well, John, in our plan, uh, we determine factors such as how long it's going to take us to remove that population from the possible affected area outside of that area, whether it just be a small zone, whether it be the entire city or anything. Uh, so evacuation moving from your location out of your location is based on that we have the time to do it safely to not put you in the area of the affected area of the disaster. All right, so uh, uh, if, if, a, if a determination is made that evacuation is just not the right way to go, now we move to option two, which is what's called sheltering in place. And what does that involve? Sheltering in place we use for short-term duration incidents and for incidents where we don't have enough time to get the people out of the thing. We see it takes us an hour or two hours to evacuate them safely. We only have 15, 20 minutes, a tornado coming. Uh, hazardous material incident in front of your building. Uh, it's safer for us to evacuate you, keep you in your place, uh, and shut your doors, shut your windows, that kind of thing. So we determined that to be sheltering in place, short-term duration, usually less than three hours. All right, and I think that our natural tendency um, uh, as human beings would be if there is some danger to kind of get away from it but that's not always the case. So if I'm in my home, and let's say there's a release of some sort of hazardous material, or I'm in a, 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 my office in a business uh, tower, let's say, uh, all those are, we, we turn to your office to tell us what we're supposed to do. And that's correct, but we hope you have a plan in effect and you know that plan before the event strikes. Because like you said, you don't wanna be going outside your house should a hazardous material incident. Um, when, we, when we had the earthquake uh, last summer, sure. people were leaving buildings, and the plan should be stay in your buildings. Yeah, now that you know, was, you don't want to go there. Well, that was tough for people yes. to, to, to understand. But you just raised a good point. Um, uh, we can't always turn to your office. Let's say we're in a business. I think those watching the program, if they are working for a company, they probably ought to ask their bosses, if they have some sort of an evacuation plan or some plan for a disaster if it were to occur. A absolutely. Everybody should have a plan, whether you're in your house, your workplace, your school. Most businesses are required to have a plan on evacuations right. and sheltering in place. We go around, we help them, we educate them on mm -hmm. the proper way to do that. If they have questions, we help them uh, manage their plan, uh, just like it is for a normal fire plan right. for evacuations. Or, again, we go back to the, you know, where we had the uh, earthquake mm -hmm. and it's stop, drop, and cover, you know, yeah, yeah. that's sort of our thing there. It's right. not to go outside. All right, we've talked a, a lot about either evacuating or sheltering in place, but now let's talk about notifications. What notifications are set up uh, in the city of Wilmington to tell us um, uh, what to do or to at least give us some information? 
Well, John, over the past few years, we've come up with a very sophisticated notification system in Wilmington, probably one of the best around the country. Uh, we first have an outdoor warning system, which will sound a siren, followed by a voice message, will tell you what actions to do. Seek shelter immediately. Evacuate the area. You go in, you do that. Uh, we, then we would follow up what we have as a telephone notification system, the DEMS, Delaware Emergency Notification System, one telephone number for every residence and business in the city of Wilmington that we would call and get you out with that message. We would then follow up with our channel 22. We have our AM radio station, 1640. And then we would end up going around with the police department, the fire department on bullhorns or on the radios and telling you to leave the area, shelter in place. So we have many ways and now with the social media, we would get that out. That's the fastest way we're seeing on some of the previous events the fastest way is somebody's tied to media. So we are using that now. All right, very good. So just to recap uh, briefly in, in terms of what we've talked about, very important information from the Office of Emergency Management, either evacuate or shelter in place, and then uh, know what these notification availabilities are, whether it be radio, television, telephone. Somehow you'll try to get information to us. For those who may be watching and just want uh, information about establishing a, an evacuation plan, an emergency plan, I'm sure they can call your office. Absolutely. Call our office at 302-576-3914. We'll be more than happy to either go over the plans, come out to any of our civic group meetings, church meetings, business meetings, and go over the plan, the plan for the city of Wilmington on how we do all this. All right. And, uh, and let's not wait. Um, uh, we, as, again, I said it earlier, as human beings, we have a tendency to kind of wait for a crisis to develop before we take um, uh, these precautionary moves. And we can act now and protect ourselves and our families. And we tell everybody, John, have a plan. Yeah. Have a plan, have a kit. You know, make sure you know the plan. Make sure you know your kids' school plans. What's going to happen in business? Because everybody's scheduled to have a plan people are not going to be able to be there. So uh, we ask them to have a plan. Very good. George Giles, he's our Emergency Management Director for the City of Wilmington. George, thank you for being with us. And thank you for letting us bring our message. Okay, and thanks for letting us use your uh, huh. wonderful facility here for the program. We appreciate it. Thanks for it. your support. Uh, Partners in Public Safety will continue in just a moment with our Wilmington Police Department. Stay with us. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Partners in Public Safety continues. Thanks for being with us here on TV 22 as we take a look at the men and women who uh, put together a public safety plan for the entire city of Wilmington. They protect us, but it's up to us as citizens to work with them so that they're more effective doing their job. And uh, joining us right now is uh, our two representatives of our Wilmington Police Department. Uh, Officer Jermaine Crawford is with us, and also Corporal Mark Ivey. It's good to uh, have both of you here with us today. We've got lots to do uh, in this segment, and we are all fascinated by these television shows that show videos of crime as it happens. It's uh, The phrase is caught on tape. Uh, <laughs> you name it, cameras seem to be out there. And yet the Wilmington Police Department has come up with, I think, a wonderful idea to kind of take advantage of that. Uh, if we have cameras 
all over. Private homes have cameras. Businesses have cameras. Um, the Wilmington Police Department is trying to put it all together in what's called shared vision. Uh, in other words, a database of mm -hmm. all kinds of cameras throughout the city of Wilmington. Uh, talk about it a little bit, and then we're going to go to a. I'll mm -hmm. go to a piece of uh, a video that we have from uh, actual an incident that occurred in a store, a local store. But tell us about shared vision. Well, what you said is right, John that a lot of people have cameras, whether uh, they're your private business or a private homeowner, a lot of people have purchased cameras for their own personal use, for their own personal security. Uh, one of the kind of, I guess, unintended consequences, or maybe consequences is a bad word, but benefits of it, is that these cameras often catch crimes that occur uh, just in front of them. So let's say you live in the 2600 block of Tattnall Street. Your camera may catch a street crime that occurred. And the idea is that our investigators can use those cameras uh, to help solve crimes. All right. Well, the trick, though, is, of course, if you don't know the camera exists, how are you going to use it? Right. In other words, if the police don't know exactly. that a camera is located somewhere, mm -hmm. so you, what, you'll put a database together, and if a crime occurs someplace, you'll then know if there's a camera in that area. Exactly. All right. That's a great idea. Excellent. And now, so far, good response? Uh, excellent response. Okay. Uh, you know, and the, the great thing about this program is that it's a community-based program. Uh, three community members, uh, uh, Brad Siegfried, Bill Pearson, and Tom Baker, actually came to us, and they're all kind of technologically inclined and like this type of thing. And they mm -hmm. said, hey, we've got cameras. We want to let the police department know about it. We also think it would be a good idea if we got other, other, other citizens on board. Um, by the way, when you mentioned those, the, mm -hmm. uh, those gentlemen and their names, um, uh, Trinity Vicinity, they mm -hmm. come from Trinity Vicinity, Little Italy, and uh, also Triangle Neighborhood Association. That's right. Proves the point here that we're partners in public safety. Absolutely. We have to work together. These people come out of the community and they work with you directly. And, and, and th these three gentlemen really spend a lot of time with us. They over about six months worth of meetings That's and correct. discussions, and trying to find a way that we could make this program uh, simple, and easy to understand, and also something that people want to participate in. All right, now look, let's go to this uh, piece of video right here. Sure. This is a, a, a business called Jade Palace yes, yes. Uh, here in the city of Wilmington. Let's just run the video. We're now going to take a look at, and you know, you got to ask yourself, I, 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 you know, I want to be part of something like this mm -hmm. because I want to help capture these knuckleheads <laughs> that um, that just, you know, arbitrarily hurt someone. What we're looking at right now are two individuals. They're at the counter of this um, store, and there's one gentleman in back of another gentleman. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going we're gonna to watch here for a minute. This develops. Right. Um, mm -hmm. There's the, um, the store clerk pointing. Now, the gentleman walks over this way, and it looks like he's got money in his hand. And he's going to put the money down on the counter. Or I guess he's getting ready to pay. Now, watch. Oh, mm. oh. And the, and the guy in back of him just takes a good whack. Takes the money. And, and takes the money and leaves. Okay, there, there's, this is why it's important to have cameras, number one, mm -hmm. but why it's important to be part of the shared vision program. And what you said about that feeling of anger you, you felt when yeah. you watched this video. Yeah. It's really about sticking up for yourself and standing up for your neighbors. Th 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 that's what the camera's going to capture. The camera's going to capture crimes that occur to you and to your neighbors. And if this is something that uh, angers you, something that you say, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to tolerate it anymore. You're the type of person who we want to participate in this program. All right. Now, throughout this segment, uh, at the bottom of the screen, we've had information up about how you get to the uh, website for mm -hmm. Shared Vision. So we want our folks watching the program take a look at it, be part of it, sign up, and join the Wilmington Police Department. Um, this is all about, in this segment, we've talked all about solving crimes. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we don't get a chance. Uh, we can't solve crimes. We have crimes uh, not in just this city, but any city that have been out there for years. And that's the subject of the next thing we're going to talk about here, which is cold case. Officer Jermaine Crawford, you have information for us about the cold case. Yes, I have a situation that occurred uh, March of 1998. Vaughn Williams was the victim. He was a black male, 35-year-old black male of the 1100 block of Davis Street. Um, one night, March 2nd, around 7 o'clock, Vaughn left his house on 1100 block of Davis Street, said that he, would go, he was going down the street. He went to the 3rd and Madison Street, right behind the McDonald's, 3rd and Madison. 
where he was observed inside of his blue BMW parked right on the corner. Um, a woman was driving northbound on Madison Street and observed his BMW parked at the stop sign. And um, she heard a gunshot, a struggle ensuing inside of the vehicle, and that was the last we heard of that. Wow. Um, the next morning, March 3rd, we got a call from residents in the area saying that there was a subject sleeping inside of his vehicle. They were concerned. We responded out, and we located Vaughn with a gunshot wound to his chest. Wow. Yeah. Um, unfortunate situation. and. Um, I know okay. you talked about shared visions earlier. I wish we had it then. Yeah, and so uh, very little information here. What if if anyone has in watching this program has it's jogged anyone's memory or in a piece of information? What do they do? They should call Detective Kimberly Path at three zero two five seven six three six four three. All right, we know these cases, these cold cases, are very tough on the families. Uh, Vaughn Williams' sister had a short comment to make about what she's going through. I would like for more of the um, community to start sticking together because you never know when it might happen to somebody in your family and then you'll know what to do when something happened like this to your family. It's time for us to all stick together and stop talking and doing all this walking. Start sticking together and get this job done because it's time. It's time. You're absolutely right. Thank you, Lynette. We really appreciate it. All right, uh, Jermaine, thanks so much. Okay, uh, the uh, Jermaine and Mark Ivey are going to join us, uh, bringing us cold cases. You can help. Maybe you can help solve some of these crimes. Let's turn to a um, happier note for just a moment. Recently, we had the promotion of a number of Wilmington police officers. Mark, tell us about it. Uh, it was a great night. We had a uh, promotion ceremony at the Baby Grand Theater. Uh, they were nice enough to host us. We had 16 officers receiving promotions, everywhere from sergeants, lieutenants, captains, and two new inspectors. Uh, we also had two canines who recently graduated from our canine academy who have graduated and are ready to hit the street. And we also uh, had some citizen commendations for Bill Pearson, uh, Brad Siegfried, and Tom Baker, who helped us with the Shared Vision Project. That's that's this was nice. a great night for everybody. Yeah, and you know we have a new uh, uh, we have a new um, a police chief, and mm -hmm. and essentially what this represented was. Uh, uh, that new police chief putting some of her command mm -hmm. in place in terms of some of these promotions. A lot of very qualified people who've had great careers and they're going to continue to do great things. So we're excited for the future of this police department. Very, very nice. Okay, good. Well, thanks for bringing us that. And it's, uh, you know, the, uh, the men and women of the police department out there doing great work every day. Um, it's good that they're recognized for their efforts in terms of promotions, but you're also recognized throughout our neighborhoods uh, I, I can't tell you the number of people that step forward to say what a pleasure it is to work with our police officers, uh, and that's what we can, we need that to continue as we make our neighborhood safer. Absolutely. Okay, well it's good to, again, to have both of you with us. You're going to be back with us on future segments on uh, Partners in Public Safety, and always good to see you. Thank you. Thanks, right. John. Thank you again now. Uh, remember all the telephone numbers and all the information that we talked about on today's program because you can step forward each day of the week and work with the men and women of the police department, fire department, and our emergency management team to make this a safer city and a better city. It's a beautiful city as it is, um, and we can do our part to just make everything better. And thanks again for being with us on Partners in Public Safety.